my wife is like a plastics crusader. And I have, as a result of uh, being married to my wife, become like an anti-plastics crusader also. And anytime you start like going into this research about this, if you're a progressive and you start understanding these ideas, you're like, holy crap, we've got to get away from this stuff. We've got to get away from plastics. You know, there's a story. I'm going to give you a 30,000 foot level story. Did you hear about it? I think it's Neil Armstrong's space suit. I don't know if you heard this story in the Smithsonian Institute. This is how bad plastics are, right? They never, ever, ever go away. OK, all they do is break down and they get they turn into like fine particles that we end up breathing in. We end up eating them. And it's it's thought that we end up eating over a credit card's worth of plastic on a regular basis in our lives. OK, that it's just part of our environment now. And if you're Grover, who chews on everything around here, he's probably eating like a, I don't know, a whole Lego set worth of plastic on a regular basis. Maybe that explains why his tummy's been upset over the past few days. Got into some of the kids' plastic toys. Nevertheless, Neil Armstrong's spacesuit at the Smithsonian. There's nothing they can do about it. It's breaking down because a lot of it's made of plastic. So this amazing piece of history, like we have World War II uniforms, Revolutionary War bayonets and guns and uniforms from the Revolutionary War, right? We have Roman shoes, Neil Armstrong, who lands on the moon in 1969. No, we can't. We can't keep good things because that's already breaking down. That just goes, goes to show you like how how this how this stuff works. So the plastics in the suit, and there's nothing they can do about it. It just continues to deteriorate. You can't do anything to it. You can't treat it. Sorry, it's just breaking down. So there is a move right now among all of these big manufacturers to put in place I love this. So here's a here, here's a cover of the Wall Street Journal this morning. One answer to America's recycling problems: make big brands pay. So what if companies that sold you recyclable containers helped pay for the recycling of those containers? Soon, federal and state lawmakers will propose a bill that will make them do it. This includes cereal makers that sell products in a box, soda makers that sell in cans and bottles, sellers of canned goods, you name it. The bill will ask these companies to chip in for that curbside collection, sorting and recycling. Senator Tom Udall has been a big fighter of this from Colorado. I'm sorry, New Mexico. New Mexico Senator Tom Udall says that this will put the financial burden of plastic pollution back on the manufacturers who generate it and profit from it. He says they cannot and should not wash their hands of it if this bill passes. But you've got to know, right, that the fees for recycling will not come out of corporate profits. Of course, co companies will likely pass on that fee to us, the consumer. But that's fine, in my opinion. And this is where it comes down to us as consumers. Like we have all of you watching right now. I think I want to thank you for being a part of this show, like for taking time out of your morning to watch a show covering an issue that I think is incredibly important. Like you could easily just switch us off right now and go watch something stupid. But the fact that you're paying attention to this says volumes about the type of person that you are. This is a message that you can take to your children. This is a message that you can take to other people in your family. And you don't have to sound like a ninny about it. Like you're constant like, oh, mom, there she goes talking about plastics again. It's literally destroying our environment. Listen to Tom Udall talk about this. And I want to talk more about some of these fine particles and what we can do about it. I think it's absolutely fascinating. All right, where's my Tom Udall soundbite? Come on, man. Come on, I man. I have to drag it in. Give me a, give me a second. Where is I it? I don't wear it to pay. Here we go. Thank you um, so much, no, Chairman Barrasso and Rangi, member of Carp, sure and members of the committee. And it was a nope, good. real pleasure working with good? Senator Whitehouse yep. on that okay, Save so. Our Seas bill. And thank you for inviting me today. In recent years, Americans across our country have woken up to the fact that we have a plastic pollution crisis. A study released last week found that the equivalent of millions of plastic bottles rained down or swept onto our Western national parks each year in the form of tiny plastic particles. We, don't kn we know plastic doesn't go away, so when it breaks down, 
we find it two miles above sea level in the Rocky Mountains in the form of rain. Could you hear that? I want you to think about something for a second. In Pittsburgh, you know, I went to University of Pittsburgh. I used to hear the stories from my girlfriend and her family grew up in Pittsburgh. And so they would talk about waking up in the morning and going outside, seeing that Pittsburgh Post Gazette on their on their front pay, on their front step, covered in black steel soot from the steel mills. The rivers highly polluted. The air awful. One of the most polluted cities in America. Cancer, you name it, all kinds of health problems. And what did they do? They got together and said, we can't live like this. So these little fine particles of steel soot all over the place, they have to brush off the steel soot off the front page of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette in the morning and clean it off their cars. Now we have fine particles of plastic raining down on us in the rain. Think what it's doing in the birds and in our enti entire ecosystem. I think the sad part is, is that human beings, we sort of sit back and think that we're we're immune to all of this or that we're like sort of cloistered off and it's not going to affect us. You know, everyone watching right now knows that that's not the case. And again, I want to thank you for watching this show. You could be watching some crap right now. You could be watching some stupid mainstream media morning show where they're talking about Kim Kardashian. Can I ask a question? They're talking about, please. What is, why did that guy have a canister of marijuana next to him in that video you just played? Was that? <laughs> Are those the, is that marijuana or pine nuts? <laughs> sure doesn't look like pine nuts from my Seven miles perspective. Below sea oh, it's not. No, that's not marijuana. He goes on. Uh, now I see it. Those are pieces of plastic. Oh, okay. To, uh, to elucidate his point. These are like fine little particles of plastic that have just like broken down and they found in the environment. But listen to him talk here about, I know it does look like cannabis. <laughs> he, maybe he's doing twofer that day. He's like, hey, I'm going to talk about getting rid of plastic and also let's legalize yeah. marijuana. He's like, you know what the solution to our plastic the problem Marianne is? Trench. This right here. Right. Just don't even, just ignore it and just smoke more weed. That'll make you happy. So here is Tom Udall, New Mexico Senator, talking more about this. The deepest place in the ocean, there are plastic wrappers. It's in our own bodies. Research shows we swallow a credit card's worth of plastic every week through every our week. air, water, and food. For too long, we have placed the burden on millions of consumers and taxpayers through curbside recycling and the hope that if we dutifully sort our plastic into blue, blin blue bins, we will reduce pollution. It's clear that this approach has failed. So coming together to put this plan, which would have companies pay into the recycling costs. This is already happening all over Europe again. Why is the United States always last to this? You know, Winston Churchill famously said Americans will always do the right thing after they've exhausted all other options. So Europe does it. Germany does it. Oh, Europe, Germany's in Europe. Uh, Canada does it. India does it. In the U.S., this is only required for paint and batteries and mattresses and a handful of other items. In Germany, for instance, where companies have been paying towards recycling since the 1990s, 67% of municipal waste is recycled compared to that of 25% in the United States. So wouldn't it be amazing if we could... In some ways, this would really push... Like, you think about General Mills, for instance. Okay, let's just talk about cereal for a second. Right? You're like, well, how would that be? How could we eliminate this type of this type of packaging? Right? Like, I want my Cheerios, and I don't eat cereal at all, but like what you know, so many families do. Like they want their Cheerios in the morning. What do you do? Well, guess what? You go back to the early 1930s before we had any of this single-use plastics, any of this single-use packaging. And as my wife and I were talking about this morning, said, you know, the, the cardboard box as a way of distributing things didn't come around until the 1930s from Nabisco. Because a guy came up with this idea of packaging things in cardboard. And this little cookie company wants to sell his cookies in a store so that it could be boxed up. And the, the, the boxer says, you know what? You need to put a label on it. Well, how are you going to name your cookies? And he's like, well, how about, uh, what is it? Abis Nabisco? Nabisco became, what was it? You need a biscuit. And a biscuit became Nabisco. 
So he put that in the box. They start selling these in, in grocery stores. Need a biscuit. Need a biscuit. Nabisco. You need a biscuit company. So that's the start of it. But before then, what did people do? Oh my gosh, how is that possible? How am I going to go to the grocery store and not come home with 80 boxes and things of plastic? How am I going to do this? Here's how you do it. Like we've always done it. You go to that grocery store with your reusable tins, with your bags that you bring from home. You bring your tin that gets your, your oats and you go up to the like little machine and you get the thing of oats that you need and it's weighed and you pay and you go home. Imagine that. Go to a thing that has a whole thing of Cheerios and a big thing. Shh. Instead of an individual box with wrapped in plastic inside of it and the cardboard box. Well, and nothing pisses me off more this day and age when I get a package or something from Amazon and it's in one of those plastic things that you need scissors to even like attempt to get open. Like there's no oh. opening it. You got to stick your oh. finger in like the hook hole, you know, and try to pry it. And then you cut your finger. And, and then you rip your finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got one of those the other day, actually. It was like a little LED light for a lamp. And it came in this big a cardboard with a bubble of plastic over it. And I couldn't get into the damn thing. And I like ripped my finger off trying to get in the top of the, you know, little nubby thing where they hang it on the hook. And as uh, my wife pointed out in this great book that she's been reading, like the history of groceries. What is it? The history of groceries or the secret life, life of groceries. She's talking about the history of the Piggly Wiggly. That was really the first grocery store to actually use pre-packaged stuff, like actually packaged items. And the owner of Piggly Wiggly came up with the idea by watching pigs at a trough and said that if we get pre-packaged things in our store, housewives, this was his thought, would go like pigs to a trough because then they'd be able to go in and see exactly what they're getting. Oh, I know there's 12 cookies in this box pre-packaged and I can stand out as a consumer because I'm going to, I'm going to buy the Chips Ahoy rather than the generic brand and sure enough that's how piggly wiggly exploded pre-packaged stuff now you're starting to see a rise of these companies and stores there's one in west uh, in, in new jersey that was near us a short time ago called the bottle store i think it was called and where you would bring in your reusable soap bottles your detergents for your laundry you just would bring it in and they would have the huge things and they'd fill it up for you so you didn't have to keep buying reusable stuff and you would use this forever that's how we do it. But we're so obsessed with all of this single-use stuff. So instead, if we can pass this on to the manufacturers, to the companies, we might see a change in bulk where we could go back to living that way again. It well, would dramatically it, reduce the amount of, you know, of reliance on this stuff. Jennifer and I bought a bunch of like reusable bags. And when we go to the store, our local grocery store fortunately has a bunch of bulk food. So we get our, you know, our beans, our lentils, our nuts and everything like all from these bulk things in the, in these reusable, reusable bags. Um, and so we're not, you know, getting plastic bags every time we go to the grocery store because you end up with this big cupboard full of plastic bags that you're planning on using as trash bags or something. And then you end up just having to throw them all away. And it's just like, it's complete waste. And, it, and like you said, it doesn't break down like other things. Right. And, you know, the, so we've been buying those plastic bags for the trash cans that are the biodegradable ones. They're like made of like corn or whatever, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and they biodegrade within like a few weeks, I guess, of being in the ground. Um, same thing with the dog, you know, take Grover out for his little walk and uh, have the little green, the little green bags for him. And uh, they break down. I'm talking about you. They break down and go right in the, you know, so they're not bad for the environment. And uh, yeah, that's how we start making a change in this stuff. But all you need to do is spend some time like looking at the data, looking at the, these animals that they're cutting open. They're finding these like whales washing up on the beaches and they're cutting open their stomachs in the autopsies and they're seeing just their stomachs filled with plastic. These birds that have their entire in, you know, insides filled with plastic pieces. If that doesn't make you upset, then your head's not screwed on right. You know, the future of our planet, and we're seeing it all over the place. You know, and I guess if people don't care about the environment, they don't care about birds, they don't care about animals. But when you hear the fact that you're eating upwards of a credit card of plastic every week through the air, through the water, and through the food, and just in your general environment, that should make you wake up, right? Breaks my heart to think that like up in the Rocky Mountains, these pristine Rocky Mountains and the waterways there, you know, you see the Coors commercials, right? The, the water of the Rocky Mountains. 
Now picture that same commercial with just like in the snow with like little pieces of plastic just floating down because of the rain, you know? That means I potentially ate plasticos yesterday. Plasticos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. In your in your in your taquitos, you probably have plasticos. (laughs) It's really sad. It really is. It is sad. Like I say, I live here by the waterway here on the beach and I take Grover out for a walk. And after a big storm and the waves have been pounding and stuff just washes up, there's little bottle caps everywhere. There's, you know, random little pieces of toys. There's a half a bottle, you know, water bottles. They're all plastic. Like all the, it's, everything else is like broken down in the environment, but no, the plastic just washes back up. Here it is in little fine pieces that never, never goes away. It's awful. It's awful. Let me know your thoughts on this. I mean, are you guys passionate about this in the chat? Let me know. Like, can I make you passionate about it? Corn and cannabis oil plastic are biodegradable. There you go, Malcolm. I love Malcolm has his avatar, by the way. It's a, it's a, it's a marijuana leaf. There you go. So those are the bags that we use that like they break down over time pretty quickly instead of plastics, which never do crazy old geezer. I remember when you could take soda bottles to the store and get money, they'd recycle those bottles. Yeah. Remember that? Remember the homeless people that would, you see them all constantly like rounding up plastic cans and soda bottles and taking it back to the recycling center to get five, five cents or whatever it was. Those days are gone. Kate Biodrowski, my husband worked at Aldi where they, where they accept your bottles for cash to recycle. He said after the store closed, they were just told to toss them in the dumpster. That's awful. Aldi is a German company. Of course, the Germans are always out in front on this stuff. Not sp- oh, and Aldi owns Trader Joe's now. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Healthy Not Cute Water is an online community designed to inspire and motivate people to be their authentic self. Break the mold. If you're that person that gets shot, be the one shot still standing be the person with the arrows in your back show other people the way be positive look past the deceptions and the obstacles of life encourage yourself and others around you we're going to be bringing more videos like this we want to hear from you guys if you have some motivational inspirational video or aspect of your life that you like to share with the community so that we you can keep this going we like to hear some feedback, like and follow this, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching Healthy Not Cute Water.